initiatives and reinforcing sub CDFIs, which are community development financial institutions operating infrastructure. Uh, and then we're also looking at the number two is we're looking at rebuilding the workforce. As we, you know, as well as I do, some of the businesses that are going through this COVID will, will not come back. Uh, and as a result, what happens to those employees? So there needs to be immediate need to retrain them and for the immediate and long term history of the and then we also love to support anything around growth and green jobs. And then thirdly is building financial security. That's for policy, preserving that, establishing financial education centers and innovation labs, and uh, continuing to support social safety efforts, those would include things like food bank. Um, excuse me, Mr. Robinson. I can't hear you. Is that is anybody else having problems hearing him? I can't hear him either. Hold on a second. Let me let me see if I can speak. Can you guys hear me? Microphone, please. I I I heard you, Crystal. Okay, because it seems to be something. Mine is held up on my side, but I think I can. I have it on the um, uh, uh, live side. It's working. Can everyone else hear? I can hear him. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's try it again, Frank. Sorry about that. Do you want me to start over, or where do you want me to go? At point two, uh, rebuilding. The last couple of minutes. Okay. So Stephen said at point two, and so you know our first point again was small business recovery. That is, you know, what we're seeing right now, especially with COVID and this, and it, all the efforts around small business. The number two is around rebuilding the workforce, um, training folks for immediate and long-term reentry. As you know, some of the jobs that are out there will not come back. So how do you train those for those folks back in? to immediate and long-term reentry. And then of course, supporting anything around green jobs um, and the environment. So we're looking at doing that through the workforce, our initiative around the workforce. And our third thing that we're looking to do is um, around building financial security. And that is preserving affordable housing, um, establishing financial education centers or innovation labs. Um, and then, and I can further explain that, but I, I just want to leave that as high level. And then also contribute to social safety net services. And those would be uh, the food banks, for example, um, which are desperately needed. Um, this process of what we're going to do through the community recovery program will probably be an 18 month to 24 month process. We'll be supporting nonprofit organizations whose objectives align with the mission of the community recovery program. Now, the great thing that I can tell you about this program is that the nonprofit does not have to be a 501c3. They could be a 501c4, c6, c19. Um, as you know, many of the ethnic chambers of commerce are 501c6s, they're trade organizations. And they could never really apply for funding unless they had a foundation component behind it or with it. Um, now they could just apply directly to us under the community recovery program. Uh, we'll be, you know, and they will be able to apply for funding for their programs and initiatives that address these three critical areas that I spoke about earlier. And we'll be likely taking applications within the next 60 days. And of course, these applications will be online through our, our website. And for more information, you can visit us on the website at www.unionbank.com or you can email us at community recovery at unionbank.com. And I'll stop there. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Are there any questions? Anyone have any questions before we move on to? I, I have a question. So um, as I'm a small business owner and a lot of people in the call are also small business owners. Now, how, which one of these programs, how can that benefit us? Like, what do we have to be a customer of Union Bank um, to no. participate in this uh, $10 million local thing? No. Or no. You don't have to be a customer? 
No, no, there's two things. Um, number one, these will, most of you are for profit, so the, the money's not going to be going directly to you. But it will say, for instance, um, the BBA or another ethnic chamber or another organization uh, was to come up and say, hey, look, we would love to host tons of these where we're doing all of that. They would come in and apply for funding from us to make sure that this is out there. Because I think one of the greatest things that I see when talking to business owners, uh, especially African-American business owners, is the lack of information. So we got to get more information out there for you to be successful. Um, and how do, in, in my opinion, how do we, you know, I ask one big question to all of my customers, especially black business owners. I ask them, are they an entrepreneur? And most people said, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I said, can you leave your business within 90 days for 90 days and for that business to be successful? Can you leave, go on a worldwide trip? If you cannot leave, you're not an entrepreneur. You're self-employed. I need for every black business in this country to be entrepreneurs. Move in that direction to becoming an entrepreneur where you can leave and that business is up and running and going. So that's the objective. And maybe there's some organizations that are going to help you become entrepreneurs. Then we will fund that. And then you can see the benefits from that, whether it's the information, whether it's direct access, whether it is going in and applying for a loan that maybe a, a union bank or another bank would not approve. Maybe they have other kinds of lending sources because they, they do more flexible underwriting or, uh, and that would work for you. Um, we're looking at all of those avenues. And, and your last question, do you need to be a Unibank customer? Absolutely not. Um, the, the program is open to everybody. Uh, we will be giving, you know, we'll be giving money to organizations that bank somewhere else. So that, that's not gonna be an issue whatsoever, okay? So uh, Brianna, I just wanna make sure that we're clear on that. Um, and then on top of that, you know, what kind of things could they do that you could take advantage of that's gonna help you? And I always tell people all the time, being self-employed self doesn't mean by being by yourself. You should have an army and that army includes your CPA, your accountant, your banker, you know, other sources that there's a whole team that's right behind you, propelling you forward to success. So I, I, I took the Mayflower approach at answering that question and I apologize, but. Uh, <laughs> It's, I, I'm just passionate about this. So, uh, if we needed to know more, do you have a website or uh, uh, email oh, wow. share with us? Yeah, again, it's uh, unionbank.com. So if you go onto our on the website and then stream all the way down, you'll see corporate social responsibility. That's the department in which I work under. And then if you click on corporate social responsibility, the first thing that pops up is community recovery program. But I heard you mention that your daughter, was it your daughter has a nonprofit? Yeah, she started it when she was 14. Okay, so she could technically, within corporate social responsibility, if she goes underneath corporate social responsibility, there is foundation support through our foundation. So she can actually apply your daughter because she's a 501c3 could actually apply underneath that. So I think it's, it behooves anybody to do that. I mean, I always tell people do business with people who do business with you. So if you got a bill from Verizon, you might want to go on Verizon's website and see where their foundation is. If you're getting something from San Diego Gas and Electric or SoCal Gas or Edison or any of those, you might want to look at their foundation to see if they can support you on their initiatives, if, if their mission aligns with yours. So again, um, there's a lot of things that you can do to be on there, but your daughter can even apply. I was, I was just hearing you earlier and I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, well, thank you so much. Does anyone yes, else have any questions for Frank? Uh, yes, I do. And Bianca, I put something in the chat box, box for you. Uh, Greg, um, also, in your capacity as director of community out, I mean, Frank, I was talking about where, I mean, you and Greg next to each other. Uh, Frank, you're also involved with Union Bank's uh, philanthropy foundation. What are some of the initiatives taking place there that can break the minority of business community can leverage their influence to take advantage of? 
and what dollars are available? Well, there's a lot of things. First of all, in the first part of my speech, first part of what I spoke, I said there was a $3 million. Um, we did that through COVID. 80% of those 80 of those dollars went to diverse businesses, uh, diverse business initiatives, um, not diverse businesses themselves, but went and applied to whereby we, we knew the outcomes were going to be helping uh, diverse businesses, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and veteran-owned businesses. Um, so under the foundation, foundation always looking for 501c3 nonprofits. And so they are going to be the CDFIs. Where if you're looking at small business, CDFIs, they're going to be some technical assistance. So it may be the Sharon Evans of the world. It may be Axion. It may be uh, the Renaissance Center in the, in the Bay Area. Um, so those are the kind of organizations because they provide those kind of systems to get you capacity built, right? To get you where you need to be. Um, so we're looking to support the, all of those kind of initiatives. And sometimes it's kind of out of the box thinking, especially on the community recovery program, out of the box thinking, like I was mentioning earlier, an innovation lab. What is that? That is going to be partnering with a nonprofit that could probably come in and work inside of our branch to deliver products and services that we can. And I'll give you a perfect example. One of the biggest barriers to anybody on financial wealth is credit and establishing credit. They have a product where they could do a loan for $100 at 0% interest rate with a $5 fee. You pay $17 back a month for six months, you immediately qualify for a $300 loan, $50 a month, 0% interest rate, $5 fee, and then you're, you're off and going in a year, 80% of the people that they've done this, and they've done hundreds of people through this program, 80% of the people who've gone through this, their credit score jumped over 700 because they report that. Now, I'll never, no bank will ever offer a $100 loan at 0%. It's just not going to happen. But why not have them come inside of our branch and then offer that for the, especially in a low to moderate income community and offer that so they can use that to build on the credit. And then from there, and a year from later, I get that guy talking to me about owning a home and everything else. You can be a person with a 720 credit score and he's got income. I'm gonna try and get him into a house, everything else with the, with the loan. So, but the barrier has always been, sometimes it's been credit. So innovation lab is something like that, something innovative, kind of different, something new. So. Um, Thank you, Frank. That's really good. But um, we have a, because most of us are business owners on this call. Can you tell us about your supply diversity program and some opportunities that you may have coming up? Sure. So under our supply diversity program, we have what is called, um, we have two people who run that, Richard Chacon and Donna Ruff. Um, and what it is, is you actually go again, back on our website under, under corporate social responsibility, and then you tap into corporate social responsibility, you'll also see supplier diversity. In there, you could actually request an application to do business with Union Bank. And then you're certified, and then they will work with you on your certification. Now realize Union Bank is a little bit different. If you're doing business with us under $100,000, you could be self-certified. If you're doing business over 100,000, we would like you to be certified as an MBE, DVBE, those sort of things. Uh, but what we would do is we would we would look at you and figure out. We would do an assessment and say, are you are you are you interested in doing business? Yes, I'm interested in doing business with you. Are you ready to do business with us? And in some cases, you're not ready. So sometimes we would even look at our first tier to see, hey, can you work with them? to bring them along, to get them ready to do business directly with us, or if you can bring them in as a second or as a uh, underneath that prime. But we, we, you, we usually have what is called workshops. We have what is called uh, events that we sponsor. We've done some things with the BBA. We've done some things with some other organizations around getting, to, getting you to know who we are and for us to know who you are. And then our objective is in corporate social responsibility is to get you in front of the buyer within the bank of a particular item, whether it's uh, everything from buying paper to construction, uh, even legal services. So if we're looking at a black law firm, 
would you be interested in doing outside counsel for us? So all of those things are open and available. The only thing that we really don't do is that we, have, you know, on the diversity is taxes because there's only one U.S. government and uh, and stamps because there's a postage postage department. But everything else is. Do you, adver do you advertise your procurement, or is it just relationship based? It's kind of relationship. We let you know when the RFPs are coming. Uh, we don't just we're not like the city or the state that just you know broadcast basically here are the list and this, that, and the other. So you really do need to build a relationship and know who we are. And, and when we put you in that database, anything that pops up, that supplier diversity manager will be you know, contacting you and letting you know, hey, there's an opportunity here. Let me see about how to get you in the front door. Now, once you're in the front door, it's on you. But um, you know, we're not saying you're gonna get a contract for that call, but you're gonna, we're gonna get you in that door so you can go ahead and pitch your services. Awesome, awesome. Um, so the first step is to go in the database and register, fill out the okay. application. And, and, yeah, and, it's one, and it's a one page sheet. I mean, it's really small. Um, and are you certified, name, address, what you do, blah, 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 blah. And then you send that information and so we can put you in the system so we know. Who, so we know. Can you share the information with us? Uh, maybe on the chat box of uh, maybe you're one of your diversity managers that after like we fill it out and we don't hear anything for a month, maybe we can call make sure we did it correctly. Is there yeah, someone in I, Union Bank? Yeah, I could share that I, again, but it's just right on and I will. Absolutely, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Does anyone else have any questions? Yes, okay. I, I, I have a question. Uh, good morning, uh, Frank. My name is Dahabu. I am um, small business owner. Uh, I have a nonprofit and I was listening to you saying about um, literacy programs for the community, such as teaching literacy. So if my uh, organization taught literacy, I can get funding for that from you guys. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, our focus is around financial literacy. Um, are you just talking about just basic reading and writing? No, 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 no. Financial literacy. Oh, yeah. Financial you literacy. Could apply. Absolutely. But okay. But if you're a 501c3, you can apply not only, look, I'm gonna give you a secret. You can apply to different buckets. You can apply for a community recovery program because this is a special initiative, but you should already be applying to the foundation under the Union Bank. And if it's financial literacy, to be honest with you, you should be applying to all the banks. Uh, and I'll tell you this, and don't be afraid of not applying to all the banks. The only reason a bank would get upset with you is if you if you did your business account at, a, at this bank and try to do a business account somewhere else. We're, we're gonna fight like tooth and nail for your relationship. But when it comes to supplier diversity and the foundation, you should be applying to all of them. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. What branch do you work out of, Frank? Do you work at a branch in LA? Do you work at a branch in LA? Or no, you I'm, in, I'm based in San Diego. Okay. But I handle it for, I handle what I do for the bank is across the entire enterprise. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Can you mute yourself, please, if you're not speaking? Uh, Frank, I don't know if there's a last question. We don't have any more questions. Do you have any more questions for Frank? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Jasmine, go ahead, Jasmine. Hi. Hi. Um, for the garment industry, you need um, a mutar, have a, have a mutar computer. Oh. Okay. 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 Go ahead, Jasmine. Yes. yes. What yes. suggestions do you have for the, in the garment industry? In what regard? Are you say in terms of finance, in terms of. Um, You're on mute, Jasmine. In terms of, in terms of, um, we have I'll a bad connection, Jasmine. Can you put, could you put your question in the in the chat box because we can't hear you. But we, um, for um, the of time, we're gonna go to our next presenter. Thank you so much, um, Frank. If you could hang out because I'm sure there's a lot of people had questions for you, but sure. we're having technical difficulties. But we'd like to go um, introduce Mr. Kevin Hubbard, who has some great programs. And um, we're 
we're business um, biz fed, and um, we'd love to hear about some of the initiatives that you have to help the small minority businesses to this um, during this epidemic. So welcome, well, Kevin. Well, first of all, um, I'd like to thank Frank for uh, being here. Union Bank is one of our board members for BizFed, LA County Business Federation, and BizFed Institute. My name's Kevin Harbor. I uh, wear two hats. I'm the president of BizFed Institute, which is a think tank organization, and the chief development officer for LA County Business Federation, better known as BizFed. So, uh, BizFed Institute is a 501c3. Our charter is to, again, provide a platform for impactful and meaningful discussion for business community uh, thought leaders, uh, connect them with elected officials and public agency leadership. Our focus, uh, you know, just to, you know, to make sure I set the table, uh, we don't offer programs. What we offer is an opportunity to uh, get involved in civic issues in terms of public policy. So what that means is that uh, on the bid side, we, uh, as a part of our membership, we have over uh, 201 uh, business associations and chambers of commerce. And that, uh, you know, for all 88 cities in LA County, and uh, that includes all vertical markets, just about every industry. And it also includes, uh, you know, ethnic and gender-based uh, chambers and associations. Now, our charter on the BizFed side is to look at uh, public policies or legislature that impact business and advocate to uh, support or oppose it. Uh, we're more of an organization that you would join as a board member uh, to support legislation that is impactful in a positive way uh, for your business or to oppose legislation uh, that negatively impacts your business. We've been around 12 years and uh, we have a track record of winning over 71% of whatever we support or oppose. And uh, what I'd really like to encourage you to do is go on our website at www.bizfed.org and it'll give you a, a good snapshot of some of the things that we do and why it's important to you. And, you know, why is it important to you? Because we deal with assembly bills, like for example, AB664, which is expanding workers' comp. If you're a business owner, uh, there are certain uh, Senate bills and assembly bills that you want to investigate that you will end up being impacted by. And if you're not part of the discussion, as they say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Mm -hmm. We need a better representation of the minority community. Uh, we have a lot, uh, we do have GLAC, Greater LA African American Chamber of Commerce with Angela Gibson and Jean Hale. We do have the Regional Black Chamber. And uh, Frank, you mentioned Sharon Evans. Sharon Evans is the President CEO of uh, Business Resource Group, a CDFI. Uh, she's on our board also. And uh, Shanae Rourke, past president of National Association of Women Business Owners. So uh, again, we need more uh, minority participation in particular from the African-American community because we have discussions that are going on right now, for example, on technology, on 5G rollout. Uh, you know, rest assured that there are members of certain communities, I'm not gonna call names to create divisiveness, that make sure that technology infrastructure is available in their community. So when we have concerns about the fact that we're now, because of COVID-19, doing telemedicine, telework, telelearning, if you don't have the bandwidth in your broadband uh, service provider, you're not gonna be able to get the same value as your competitors or as other uh, people in this county. So it's important for you to get in the discussion. If, if nothing else, if you can't, join directly because the lowest level of membership is at 6,000 a year on the BizFed side. You can certainly join an association 
which offers a lot less in annual membership and they can represent your interests. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and, and one other thing I wanted to share with you is that uh, there was a, a mention about affordable housing and, you know, we do a lot of work in the housing space, uh, especially when it comes to uh, legislative bills. Uh, you know, we, we just supported the CEQA exemption bills uh, that provides ex uh, CEQA exemptions for those that are building uh, affordable housing and transitional housing for the homeless. So, uh, but there are also other uh, infrastructure concerns that you should be aware of, whether it be energy, whether it be water, uh, whether it be technology, uh, all of these things impa impact you. Uh, roads, surfaces, uh, you know, all the things that you might not think about, but when it comes to your neighborhood and you're wondering why other neighborhoods begin to look better and yours remains the same, is because we don't provide a voice uh, and get in the face of those elected officials on a county and statewide level and even on a congressional level that, that could make decisions to support the goals of your community. So that, that's the BizFed side. And I've been with them three and a half years, a little background on me. I, I was also uh, with uh, a director of corporate strategic relationships uh, and business development for UCLA alumni. I am a Bruin. Uh, and then I spent, hey, I see, I see some hands up there. And then uh, I spent seven years with Verizon working out of Thousand Oaks with a track and then uh, Digital Equipment Corporation it turned into HP for 11 years. So I have a te IT uh, telecom tech background. So with that said, uh, I bring a unique perspective because in today's world, technology is driving everything. And so it's good to be in these discussions. I'd also try to be the moral compass because a lot of uh, uh, a lot of our board members are concerned about the bottom line and, and rightfully so, but you have to have a moral compass with that. And, and I think you guys can read between the lines is why I need your voice at the table. Now on the other side, I am the president of BizFed Institute. And what we do is we provide a platform in the form of forums. Uh, they were in person up until COVID-19. Now they're virtual Zoom meetings, right? so that we can bring empirical information uh, to discuss the issues of the day that either in, involve uh, shaping the economic landscape of Southern California or your quality of life. So for example, last year, uh, and you mentioned Ron Galperin, uh, last year we had an energy forum. Uh, we had all the top players there, you know, uh, not only just Edison and, and SoCal Gas, uh, but also, uh, you know, the oil and gas companies. Now, it was very interesting because there was legislation out that called for the electrification of all new building, okay? And any self-respecting chef or cook is not going to settle for electric on their stove. They want gas. So uh, it's interesting because one of the strategies to reduce uh, the cost for building uh, which leads to affordable housing on all income levels is to be able to reduce the expenses uh, associated with, with uh, home ownership or commercial building ownership. So it's not the most exciting subject matter in the world, but it's very critical because if you're not involved in these discussions, decisions get made that impact you and they're going to cost you money if your voice isn't involved in the discussion. So, uh, you know, we had also uh, a meeting with GoBiz out of the uh, governor's office. We did a, a forum uh, on uh, gathering of uh, housing experts and stakeholders, transportation and infrastructure, anti-poverty. Uh, Frank talked about some of the anti-poverty initiatives and how it has to be a multi-pronged approach. Uh, you know, it's one thing to provide housing, uh, but for people to stay in that housing, a lot of them need medical attention, whether it be physical, mental, or emotional. Uh, they need education. They need work skills development and training. There needs to be a job transition. There needs to be apprenticeship opportunities. 
uh, internship because not everyone that's homeless is are adults. There are many college students. I don't know if you're aware, but a large percentage of college students, and uh, especially in the community college system, are homeless. They're sleeping in their cars and going to class and washing up in the bathrooms. And you got your heart bleeds for these kind of youngsters. I mean, they want it so bad that they're willing to do those kinds of things. So we have a chance to impact that by policy, by working with the banks, because I don't know if you're aware of Frank, but you know, Union Bank is on our board, but so is B of A, so is uh, uh, Bank of America. And we are trying to bring these folks together to help provide solutions in these areas. And, and you know, this year we have a series of four uh, regional housing work group sessions and we're teaming with Milken Institute a uh, gentleman by the name of Matt Horton. He's a director of uh, public policy uh, and government relations over there, African-American gentleman, and Kevin Cloudon. And he's the executive director. And they are committed. A lot of, you know, they, they keep it under the radar, but they are committed to try to help us figure out how do we build affordable housing? So when it comes to uh, building housing, it means building communities. And when you are able to own your home and you can, you're able to own own your business, then you are an anchor. We don't have to worry about gentrification because we can create generational wealth. Uh, the houses and the businesses provide tax bases and anchors so that schools get more money and we can uh, hire teachers. We have a, a, you know, I have two of my sons are, are teachers, uh, one middle school and one high school. And there's a big gap uh, in African-American males in particular in education and our sisters, they get it. All right. And the same goes for Latinos. So uh, I don't want to get too far off subject, but the point is, is that all this is tied in together uh, and we're providing forums so that I invite the investors. I invite the elected officials. I invite the public agency leaders. I invite uh, the, the, the people that can help us figure out how to lower the cost of building so that when we can turn the corner from this crazily ex expensive house, which is driving uh, you know, minorities out of the system, out of the city into the suburbs, getting them to be able to afford and build wealth here in the city. And then by having a presence here in the city, the local businesses have a pool of, of potential patrons. Does it, I hope that makes sense to people if you're seeing what I'm driving at here. So uh, this is the work that, that I'm involved in. Uh, I have something very interesting coming up. Uh, now our future transportation is coming up uh, on July 31st. I got uh, Phil Washington, the president and CEO of Metro as our keynote. I got Stephanie Wiggins, an African-American woman the president and CEO of Metrolink. Now, so I got Metro and Metrolink. Phil Washington is, is African-American also. The two largest mass transit system uh, 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 providers in the county are going to be here. Then I got Stella Lee, president and CEO of BYD, the largest electric vehicle manufacturer in the country. I have Hillary Norton, uh, she sits on the California Transportation Board. She's president and CEO of FAST. I got Uber Air, I got GM, and I got uh, Point C for the Dodger uh, Gondola Project. So what does all this mean to you? When it comes to anti-poverty, one of the biggest expenses in a household is transportation. And our accessibility to transportation, you guys might know about Crenshaw Subway and how they advocated to get stops here in Lamert Park. That's a pretty big deal. So my point to you is that one of the biggest ways that we can combat poverty is to provide transportation to locally, to, 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 to your jobs, and then also housing that's close to transportation. That's where Phil Washington comes in because they own property around the metro stations and they can build affordable housing on that property. My job is to help these, these organizations, these businesses figure out the financial model on how to build housing for all income levels. And we're well on our way. 
So uh, that's what we do. We also have, uh, I have another, you know, as, as a president of BizFit Institute, you sometimes, especially if you're African-American, you got to spend political capital. And it was, a, it was a, a series of meetings getting here. But I have something on the books now uh, coming up on August 27th called Removing Barriers for Minority Business and Home Ownership. My keynote speaker is going to be Richard Rothstein. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He wrote a book called The Color of Law. Very serious book. And we set the table on systemic racism, how red line and segregation have impacted us uh, in, on an institutional level over the last half to three quarters of a century. And then uh, I have people coming in that are going to speak to removing barriers, uh, uh, you know, Maybe I can get Frank to, to, to come in and, and, uh, and sit with us, or maybe uh, Tigran Papayan, who's a VP of his organization that sits on my board. Uh, we have um, uh, Reggie Webb, uh, who owns 14 McDonald's and Inland Empire. He's going to talk to the path to buying franchises. What he did was he said to McDonald's, you got to have franchise owners that represent the community. That's what you've got to have. You don't have that. So he's going to talk about his past ownership. We're going to have banks there to talk about how you can lend money. You want to have procurement officers and supplier diversity officers to talk about how businesses can have access to doing business. Um, and then we're going to have someone from GoBiz on a, on a statewide level to talk about the public policies that need to be changed for licensing for example, how to get licensed. So we're trying to create uh, a path for minorities and, and you know, particularly black and brown community uh, to own businesses, to identify uh, revenue opportunities through procurement, and then uh, to own homes. And again, the homes correlate to schools and education, better books, better technology, more competent teachers, uh, we've done, we've supported uh, curriculum uh, equality, uh, specifically in STEM, to make sure that we have the right curriculum in underserved areas. You guys know what that means. Uh, and because it's not there, not the same books, not the same technology, not the same teachers. So it's a wonder that we're not able to catch up and stay up. There's so many ways that we have to attack this problem. It's just not one way. I want to get us to a point where we're not waiting on the government to ask, to add, to give us anything. We're going to take what we want because we're qualified. We deserve it. And we're qualified to, to get the business and we deliver excellent work and products. That's who we are. That's our pride. I know all you entrepreneurs are proud of what you do and we need to grow your business, you know, and not just stay where you are, but grow it and use technology to leverage going beyond your, your regional, your neighborhood to become a global deal. You guys are on Facebook. How many ads do you see from China where you're purchasing African-based products and they're being made in China? They should be made right here. So uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, that's what I do, uh, you know, and... Uh, any questions or thoughts, uh, I'm, I'm available to answer. Kevin, that you, is Kevin. pretty awesome. This is Crystal, um, co-director. He's talking about Black Dollars and, and hosting, co-hosting this with uh, Stephen Turner. Um, how do, again, how do we uh, get involved with what you're doing? Uh, everything that you talked about is what I'm passionate about, making sure that our community is, is represented in a way to get us out of this, this place that we're in. And my principal concern is about our youth, making sure that this world that we're about to leave them is a better world than what it is right now. And I would be ashamed to leave them what we have right now. You know, Crystal, that's a great question. Um, you know, I don't mind saying I'm 62 years old. And it wasn't up until maybe three and a half, four years ago. Well, I take it back about seven, eight years ago. I, I'm also past president of UCLA Black Alumni. And it, that experience expanded my view uh, because I, you know, because of our tradition, 
you know, we have a very, you, you guys may, I mean, we had Angela Davis on campus. We just, just did a social justice summit and she was one of our panelists. Uh, I've had conversations with, you know, Common and, you know, I don't want to name drop, but, you know, and then I had Bobby Seal sit me down and talk to me about, you know, my commitment to the black community. Now, you know, it, and it was an amazing conversation. And, and this is it, Crystal. It's about self, it's about sustainability, right? It's about helping self. It's about, you know, providing the vehicles for people like yourself and every name that I see here on this Zoom meeting that I know that you don't want to have to ask for anything. You want to be able to enjoy the level of success where you're helping someone else. So to answer your question, by getting involved, I, Stephen and I are connected. Uh, he gets information on BizFed all the time. And, uh, you know, he can, if, if he can do two things. If he, if Stephen, if you can get me a list, a mailing list of everyone that's on here, I can get them on my mailing list and, ma and, and make sure that they're cognizant of all the things that we're doing. All right. And that way you can choose where your level of interest is. We need your voice. I've been given, you know, one thing I will say about Phil Washington of Metro, uh, when he comes to speak uh, at this event, he's going to talk about racism. And he doesn't pull any punches. He's, he's an ex-Army officer, and he's not afraid of anything. And I, I, and I consider him a friend. He's from Chicago, and he's gonna, he, he keeps it real. But he also understands the game that he has to play. And he makes sure that he delivers to his bottom line, but is also hasn't forgotten, forgotten, is that a new word? He hasn't <laughs> forgotten uh, our community and what's important to us. So, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is get involved. You know, you guys know about civics. Get involved, get your voice heard. You know, if, if you, if you, the easiest or least expensive way is to join an association, whether it be Greater LA, African American Chamber of Commerce, to get your voice amplified, the Regional Black Chamber, the California Black Chamber with Edwin Lombard. Uh, again, Frank talked about uh, Sharon Evans. Sharon's the secretary of the California Black Chamber. All right. They will carry forward your voice. To get involved, if you want to be a direct board member, it's 6000 a year at the entry level, but you get to take advantage of everything that we do, all right? Uh, if you want to become a board member of BizFed Institute, we know there are a few qualifications that we like to see, but because we don't have the right level of participation from my community, I will use my platform to make exceptions. I can't, you know, I, what I can do is this. I can even lower the $6,000 a year board, annual board give, okay, to maybe 50%, but then you got to provide work. For example, I, I got a guy, Matt Clink with California Strategies. I know he could afford it, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm getting, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the Kevin, signal here. Kevin, yeah. let, let me interject. Uh, Bianca for Becky had a question, and then Mr. Sure. Livingston after that. Ms. Livingston? Go ahead. I have a question, but I, you want me to go ahead or wait? Yes, and after Bianca will take control. Okay, um, so what my first question was, I know that um, BizFed was working on a small business day and um, and they were going to have matchmaking for the small businesses before the COVID-19. I know the LA Chamber was advertising that. Um, did you, um, is, this, is that postponed or is that being done um, over webinar now? So uh, the small business committee, uh, see, well, first of all, to answer your question, we do have a small business committee uh, and uh, they are doing webinars uh, on an ongoing basis. And uh, I don't have the specific information, but uh, if you could forward your question, uh, maybe Steve can put my email address up on, in the chat box or I can forward me your question with your email address, I can get an answer back to you. But the answer to your question is yes. Uh, there's a specific desire to grow small business, a focus on it, especially after COVID-19. Everybody's taking a hit, everyone. They've had to close their doors. They've had to, you know, furlough, lay off employees. Uh, and then there's, you know, the, the safety issue. 
So, uh, and then, you know, if you have employees, are you uh, liable, you know, uh, if they get sick, can they sue you as a small business owner? It puts you out of business. Uh, but if, if you're, if you're not practicing, you know, safe measures, then there's not a lot we can say, but if you are, then, you know, there's a lot you can say, but to your question, yes, they're, they're doing things all the time. Is there a way for the people on this webinar to um, get their information out there so they could find out about the small business webinars and what they're doing? The yeah, so our webinars are primarily for our members. That's what the membership is about. There are 501c6, it's membership and dues driven, and uh, it's primarily offered to our members only. However, if you join an association like GLAC, then GLAC can get you in there. And the BBA will become a member too. <laughs> Pardon me? And the Black Business Association as and, a and member. That's right, Kevin, the BBA, there you go. Let me pivot yeah. for a right. second. Ms. Livingston has a question for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say go Bruins. <laughs> Great seeing you again, Kevin. Um, you just, too. Um, thank you. So just wanted to uh, say that, uh, sorry, I was late. I, we just finished the City of Los Angeles uh, Business Ad Hoc Advisory Committee, which I am a member to the city. And one of the updates we got was on Proposition 209. If you don't know, we um, this is going to be on the November ballot as Proposition 16. I'm not sure if this was talked about, uh, but uh, uh, Kevin, I wanted to ask you: Are you how are how are you implementing uh, uh, this Proposition 16 uh, ballot that's coming up uh, uh, in November during the uh, election, and how are we capitalizing so me, on utilizing this to help our community? So let me put a qualifier out there, uh, Ms. Livingston. I'm not a policy manager. I'm not the chief advocacy officer. Yeah. My job is to, to bring money in the door. I'm the chief development officer. Now, in order to do that job effectively, I got to know about the policies, right? Because that's why people invest. So to answer your question, is uh, Prop 209 is being, this this uh, this, uh, this whole thing is being headed up by one of my fraternity brothers, Cap Alpha Mike Gibson, okay? And uh, I am on this because it also has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the issue around uh, school admissions and being a, you know, past president at UC Black Alumni. We, we, you know, right after 2000, we had less than 100 incoming freshmen. We got over like five, 600 now. We still, and we also have a Black uh, vice chancellor of admissions, even with all that. We need Prop 209 to pass. So the answer to your question is, is that, you know, uh, and, and I'm going to be candid with you. It's going to be a harder sell, right? Because uh, a lot of uh, our members are in the Republican Party, all right? And they might have a different view on things. You get me? Mm -hmm. That's why we need your voice at the table. Now, I am doing... I, again, I'm the moral compass, and I don't mind making folks uncomfortable. And when I bring that up, they get uncomfortable, but I hold their feet to the fire. And so from where I sit on this, uh, you know, what we're going to be talking about next month, there's a lot that more to Prop 209 in terms of set-asides and, and things like that uh, that can impact minority-owned businesses. So from a personal position, I 100% support it. Uh, but because we're a membership-based organization, it's our members that drive the direction we go in as an organization, not the staff. So the more members that think like you, that have a chance to speak and influence others, the better the chance we have that getting that win on the November ballot, because it's critical. If I can now, slip this in. What, 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 one last thing. I want you to know that the biggest opposition we're facing is from the Asian community on Prop 209. Thank you for that. But if I can slip this in uh, for your information, if you do not already know this, uh, Meriwether and Williams, they're having a Proposition 209 virtual town hall meeting on July 28th 
at 4 p.m. Thank you. Uh, uh, Kevin, so quickly, because um, we got about one minute left, uh, what is the membership? In terms of? Uh, the uh, Biz, um, Biz Fed Institute, because you're saying you're a membership organization. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it, it's, it's 6000 a year. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you're willing to do in-kind work, I can cut it in half. Is that the board? So everyone is a board member. Is that what That's you're saying? That's correct. That's correct, okay. but you have to be voted in. You have to be voted in. You have All to right. be voted in. With BizFed, it's also six thousand, but you don't have to be voted in. Okay, and right. any, and I see also on your website that you, there's donations that will help you carry through the causes and the and the and the missions that you guys are on. That's correct. You can donate any amount. Uh, you know, we have all kinds of sponsorships where you can get branding. Uh, we, we, we represent 450,000 businesses that employ close to 4 million people. Okay. All righty. And, uh, and as far as the list for today, um, we actually, I think, asked, with some of the new faces that I see today, there's probably about 275 people that have been coming to the web, webcast for the last, uh, since March when, when I launched it. So um, um, I definitely can provide that to you. Um, don't know who, who, who on here would be a, be a member, but I do know that as uh, for this community, you're absolutely right. That's one of my sayings. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And right now we are definitely the main meal. And um, so we need to make sure our voice, and this is an opportunity that we have as black people right now to stand up and rise up, but we have to unite. If we're not doing this together, we're not doing this at all. We can no longer be a single voice. We can no longer operate in silos. This is it. If, if we don't do what we're supposed to do right now, we can forget it. And that's just, that's real talk guys. And so I think we all need to, we all have a vested interest in, in our communities, in this country. If we're gonna remain here, we need to step up to the plate and do what we need to do so that while they're throwing all this money at us um, because they're feeling guilty, this is the time that we need to make sure that it works for us. And, and at this point, it will be nobody's fault but our own. So Stephen, um, Kevin, we were gonna get your information in the chat room or Stephen, are you gonna provide- I put uh, Kevin's um, information in the chat room. Also, I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of the Black Boots Association which is celebrating the 50th year for being online. And to close out, I'd like to give Mr. Frank Robinson the last comment. Uh, Steve, it always puts me on the spot like this. Um, <laughs> and, and Kevin, I'll be calling you, Nuke, and uh, we'll talk. We just give me you another man. Did I hear you say Nuke? Yeah, brother. I got you. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted to also just express to you that what I was always told is a small uh, a person that owns their own business owns their own life. Yes. So I take it upon you to really take advantage of the things that are coming in these turbulent times and try to make from limits to lemonade and try to reinvent yourself, redevelop those, those skill sets and really deploy the resources that are coming now that should have came 50 years, 100 years ago for the days of reconstruction. Now is that time, seize that moment to really deploy what you need to, to get your business to go in a different direction. So you improve the lives of not only yourself, but your family and leave a legacy that is empowering. Um, and always look back to, to those to give back, to improve the lives of others. So I leave you with those uh, final thoughts and I, I wish you all the best. And if there's anything that I can do you can always reach out to me. My email address is frank.robinson at unionbank.com. Always just give me a call uh, or, or better yet, just email me because that's the best way to get me because I'm like most of you working from home. So um, let me know how I can be of assistance. Email is the best way. Again, frank.robinson at unionbank.com. And again, thank you. Again, thank we you. thank, again, Crystal, close it out.
Okay, thank you guys so much for for coming out again. We'll be back next week. If there's anyone here that wants to do some business coaching with young people, I, I need um, as many as I can collect once the kids start writing their business plan. You can email me at cmitchell544 at gmail.com. Again, that's cmitchell544 at gmail.com. I have 35 amazing young people that are excited about being their own, own business owner, and but they, they need our help. So uh, the last 10 days of this month, they will be needing uh, assistance. And we're looking to get at least 100. We have 45 uh, business coaches right now. We're looking to have at least one-on-one -on -one for each one of the kids um, throughout this to finish out their business plan. Appreciate it. So we'll see you guys, the recording. Hopefully it'll be together. I got kicked out earlier, but we'll see what happens. But we are on Facebook Live, so you can always go there. Please share this because everybody needs to know this, all the amazing people that we have in our community. So thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Mask up so we can get out of this quarantine. Thank you very much for coming out. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.